Eagle Canyon is another one of my favorite trails. Located in the San Rafael Swell in South Central Utah, this trail will take the explorer through not only geologic time, but also that of humanity, stopping off at some Indian writing, visiting a 19th century ranch house, and underneath the engineering feet of the Eagle Canyon Bridge of Interstate 70. The San Rafael Swell is in the middle of nowhere. It's a huge anticline of sandstone in South Central Utah, which, if Interstate 70 didn't pass right through it, many wouldn't even know it was there. Luckily, thanks to I-70, the trailheads are easy to find and the trails are pretty well marked with kiosks at the trailheads. But that doesn't mean you should explore the area without maps and safety gear. The environment can turn harsh quickly, especially during foul weather. Keep going! The trail is a once through type and we decided to tackle it from east to west. The east side trailhead is off exit 131, Temple Mountain Road. The west side exit is number 116, Eagle Canyon view area and more. It should be noted that the trail network of San Rafael Swell is quite complex and interconnected. Different routes are available for entry and exit and one can just as easily get lost in the canyons as find their way. The soil of the San Rafael Swell area becomes slippery and clay-like when wet. Also, the canyons are susceptible to sudden flash flooding. Do not attempt this trail when wet or raining. We had to wait 24 hours for the trail to become passable after some sudden rainstorms the night before. The first major obstacle is a narrow cutout portion of the trail as you descend into Eagle Canyon. The high side rock is the correct line, but make sure there are stacked rocks on the other side or you are going to go over on your rock sliders. Take a second look if you are alone, or preferably use a spotter if you are in a group. The next area of obstacles is the wash in Eagle Canyon. Nothing too serious, but due to inconsistency of the trail conditions due to flash flooding, it is wise to take a second look at some of the steps and ruts to make sure you can clear them. As soon as you leave Eagle Canyon, you will be greeted with a large sandy climb. Luckily, the track has been eroded into the cliff face, so there is minimal risk of dropping off. But there is a risk of getting stuck. Make sure you have plenty of speed and just power out of the climb. The last climb is a cliffside oh. series of ledges. <laughs> Let me get out of there. You're not in it. <laughs> this is where having a traction device such as lockers, traction control, or a limited slip come in handy. There's one particular narrow point that is also off camber and it's the most difficult portion of the trail. Both vehicles with traction control or a locker made it over. Good, good, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do we want to just put a strap on him to get him over the strap so we don't hit his body? Yeah, let's do it. But I opted to strap the open diff Liberty. We believe the obstacle could have been traversed in an open diff, but it would require a little more speed and some strategic rock stacking. Do this at your own risk, slow, as the slow, proper slow. line is going to hug the cliff face slow. and you could risk body damage because any slipping of the open diff vehicle is going to push you to the edge of the cliff. The situation could turn dire quickly. Don't be afraid to retreat and come out the way you came in. Back down the cliff is a much better alternative than rolling your vehicle. And I said, honestly, this is easier than it looks. You will be required to go under I-70 via culvert, which is a lot of fun, but watch that approach. <laughs> oh! I mentioned, oh, well, you're not alone. Oh my goodness. Also, the median of the freeway does not drain very well, and it's deceptively deep. Watch the bottom of the Forerunner as it drives out of the westbound culvert. Oh! <laughs> Our first stop was to view an Indian petroglyph on the mountainside known as Lone Warrior Rock Art. The Lone Warrior Rock Art is unusual in that it is difficult to classify into a specific tribe, so the estimated age of the art is unknown. At the time we were there, a group of overlanders was also there, so we decided to get some family photos while waiting and then tragically forgot to photograph the petroglyph on our way out. Swayze's cabin was built in 1921. The Swayze brothers were running cattle in the area for decades before the cabin was built, and they were primarily responsible for most of the landmark names in the area. Behind the cabin are some unique uses of sandstone hollows, a meat locker for storing meat, as well as a corral for the livestock. Next up is the Eagle Canyon Arch, an amazing arch that spans 12 feet, but has an impressive 50 foot height. Finally, we reach the bottom of Eagle Canyon Bridge. 
The bridge is a steel arch design built in 1965 and spanning 375 feet. It truly is an impressive sight and it makes the journey worth it. We ran into our overlanding friends at the bottom of the bridge. One of the newer Land Rovers was sidelined with a failed alternator. Who would have guessed? I'll still trade you. I'll even throw the alternator in. <laughs> <laughs>